all of a sudden we're in a different setting and that's for the simple reason I need a larger device than my own to compress the clutch during assembly so basically what basically what I need to do is put these four clutch springs in like this then the outer pressure plate goes in there we are then comes a friction plate and the outer pressure plate you always look for marks what the inside the outside has been it has marks from the previous friction plate and on the outside here you can see the marks where the lock ring snap ring has been put this together now I can do this with one hand so I'll pick you up when I've got everything fixed in the vise put some protection on here and got it compressed so I'm gonna put the snap ring on like oh put me the other way around I prefer this direction doesn't matter actually now I'm gonna clip it in and show you the end result and we're back in my own workshop my phone battery died while I was filming so anyway here is the end result the assembled clutch only thing you need to look for you see the steps here these are the steps from the friction plate to this spark that drives the gearbox and the center splines down way down in there and this have to align it's very hard to do in a vise so I eyeball it so what I usually do is look at those steps they should protrude an equal distance from this outer friction plate and then eyeball it and uh, when they when those two aren't exactly aligned it's hard to get a clutch on the crankshaft I'll show you in a minute but anyways um, then you can tap on the outside of the housing to get those two axes aligned so next up is to fit those small um, springs in here so I got the first one in it's a bit tricky so I tried it off camera to make sure my method works it's been a while since I put these things together. What I do is put one end in here. There's this hole in the outer friction uh, pressure plate. And then slide it back. And it has to be seated on this small pin here. They are on, and now the clutch is ready to go on to the crankshaft. So before I put on the clutch, I check this bronze bushing. If it runs smooth over the crankshaft, then it does put it entirely on. Also, let me pull it off for a second. There's a small distance ring, a thick washer, so you will on here. Don't forget that one, otherwise this uh, bronze bushing will sink down too deep don't forget to put the uh, oil pickup screen in here and check for debris on here where there isn't put that in don't forget it let's get hold of the clutch and see how my alignment is Not too bad it's completely on now now next up is the locking ring the securing ring in here there it is there are three small pins on the outside that fall into these small splines here let me Put it in, get you repositioned. Up next is this ring. It's a securing ring, it's marked outside, so that one faces to the outside. Makes sense. And then we put on the clutch nut, brand new one, because the old one was beaten up. Now I need my special tool 
And now I need something to hold the clutch when I apply force. It has to be torqued. Um, I do this by feel and by hand. I'm pretty sure there is a torque number. I can put it up here in the screen. If there is any. Um, I'm gonna show you my trick how to hold this so you have enough uh, resistance to tighten the uh, the clutch nut. So the only thing you need is these uh, M5. Those are five millimeter screws. You can use bolts. Turn them in as far as you can. Maybe use a screwdriver. So it has a decent hold in the threads. What I usually do is put a 90mm wrench on here, put it in there, and now you can hold the block by one hand and uh, the ratchet by the other. the nut on the clutch some say it needs to be really tight but I say tight is tight and what you want to look for is to rotate it so far that one of these pins falls into the grooves of the nuts and so it's secured and you don't really need to tighten it i open up engines and remove the clutch from engines that were never opened before and the torque setting from factory isn't that high either you can easily loosen it um, or um, unscrew it by hand using the right tools it isn't super tight and once this is in it's secured sufficient and your clutch won't drop off so happy with that let's push one tab in And we're good. And we're about ready to put the lid on this clutch housing. And before I do that, I'm gonna squirt some oil into the crankshaft. I can see my oil squirter is leaking. Oil on here. And the surface. Put in a new gasket. This gasket used to be missing from the older gasket kits. Always had to make these myself. And what I did also did is I cleaned the inside. The residue you have in these corners here also gathers in these corners. Cleaned it out a bit. Put the last one in nice and tight with a screwdriver. Now, next up is this small bearing. Always check for play. This bearing is used to uh, transfer the pressure into the clutch housing and compress the four springs in these corners here. It's a fairly small bearing that has to uh, transport a lot of force, but they never fail. You can hear them. When you use the clutch, it should go in by hand. There it is. So up next is this little thingy, don't know how it's called. And then the outside, it's an old transport line. In fact, the oil comes in here, gets into the clutch housing with spins and thus uh, it acts as a centrif centrifugal centrifugal um, oil filter and then it goes into the crankshaft lubricating the big end bearing so now we're ready to put this cover back on but I'm not gonna do that um, I'm gonna do that yet because I want to assemble the other side first and what I'm also gonna do is pick this out because this usually tends to fall out very easy so now we're going to turn the block on this side 
and build up the opposite side, the ignition and the distribution. So I'm putting two 8mm balls in here, so I can grab it in my vise. I want the engine to be upright right now, the way it sits in the, um, in the frame. That makes it easier to assemble the cylinder and the piston and the head and all. This is how I keep it in the vise. Check the timing chain. It's in perfect order. It bends a little. Let's arm off all these things. Chain in first. Make sure it engages the oil pump, check the movement, everything is okay. We're going to put in the tensioner mechanism. So if you have a noisy engine on this side, it usually helps a lot when you replace these um, rubber parts. This is the, um, the roller on the timing chain tensioner. And this, this is it. Yeah, it's it's made of rubber. It should be soft. And I look for the shape. It has some kind of gear sprocket shape to it. Make sure everything is clean. Put it back on. Lips up here. And this head is, I believe, it's seventeen millimeters. Of course. So if you over tighten it, you'll pull out the screws and the threads and then you're in trouble. Hand tight is just fine, 70 millimeter, and that's, that's enough moves. So next in comes the plunger. This is the, uh, the plunger that applies pressure. Oh, let me rotate it a bit more towards the camera. So this is the tensioner arm we just put in. Next comes the plunger. There's a it has two springs. Thin spring that goes in. And there's this rubber cap on top. And you can see there is I had it on the camera a rubber cap on top. There's a small mark that isn't too bad. And there's a thicker spring. Going in from the lower side, slide it in, and there's a flat surface here, and that's where this securing screw grabs onto. Plunger in place. With my finger, I keep the lower spring in place, it, otherwise, it would fall out, so that holds. Now, in this is the adjustment screw, goes in from the bottom so what you do is loosen this lock screw lock nut lock screw so this can move up and down and what you do you turn this in or out when you have the engine running you turn this in until you can hear the engine start um you can really hear there's too much tension and then you slack it off by one and a half maybe two rotations and then there is enough pressure this lever here to keep the timing chain in place but nothing much can go wrong what will happen i can show you in this case but what you will get is wear marks on the lower side where the chain returns to this pocket over the camshaft uh, you get uh, get wear marks and that's an indication the wear marks are down here and when you have that um, well the chain tension has been too low too much slack for an elongated period of time. Anyway, this is in. There goes a. This cover goes on there, but I'm gonna do that later on. So, I keep this for what it is right now, because once the cylinder and the head are on, 
I'm gonna recheck the tension on the chain but for now this is okay and once this is tight you can see there is no movement so it yeah it only holds in place it doesn't use a spring action it's a bit of a weird system but it is what it is and it works just fine I'm about ready to put the piston into the cylinder over here the reason for that is that I have the piston rings in place and they can uh, they are kept in place by the cylinder sleeve there's one remark I want to make about the piston rings and especially the placement of the piston ring gaps um, this is where the spark plug is so this is where the ignition starts and thus I want to have the gap facing away from that on the opposite side so the top ring has a gap here the second ring has a gap here and the oil scraper ring has a gap you can see that over there has the gap facing the top this is the top of the cylinder it's marked in for the inlet valve reason for that is most of the oil remains at the bottom of the cylinder so you want the gap if it's if it is too large you want to face, have that facing to the top so the oil scrape ring is as effective as possible put a little bit of oil on these points the wrist pin and then I slide the piston in it's tapered at the end but help the piston rings a little to close the gap and now it's in I like to use this G clips they're very easy to insert one in apply some grease to the surface to keep the gasket sticking to keep the o-rings in place you can be quite liberal on these corners here the food gasket is on the o-ring is on part now let's slide the cylinder in oh yeah please note there are two centering bushings thingies over there to align the piston okay now let's go look for the small end see if you have anything in shot We have to wiggle the wrist pin in. Now just put a second clip in. <clears throat> Things can be a pain in the butt. I expect these to go in more easy, but and this one snaps right in place. Rotate it so that the opening is facing the top. Good look to see if it's seated correctly all the way around. Same goes for the other side. Everything is okay, so now we can push the cylinder barrel on. And I like to use an old spoke. This one out of the way, clean this one up, it's the bolt that holds the guide wheel in the cylinder in place, put the chain through, there you are, now slide the bore the cylinder on, and there we are, I've cleaned this bolt that goes in the cylinder over here, oh, let me show you around in the cylinder here, and a new guide wheel, a nice soft and rubbery wheel that guides the timing chain. Uh, when these uh, wheels, well, they get hot over time and they become very noisy. If you put a new wheel in, um, it, it really helps to bring the noise level of the engine down. And there's that. Tighten it. 
Now, could put the bolt in here, but you can you will warp the cylinder. It goes on crooked, and then you apply a lot of pressure on the studs here. So I do that only when these four are tightened with a cylinder head, head on, which is our next step. The first order of business is to put in these alignment alignment bushes. There they are. Put some grease on the oil return line. So this can go in. Check the surface once more. And squirt a little bit of oil in the cylinder. I'm gonna rotate it a couple of times. I don't want it to be dry. And now we're good to slide the head back on. Put a little bit further away. Oh yeah, don't forget the head gasket. Alright, so alignment is good. So. Now it sticks and it's because this rocker Axle is in the place. I'm gonna push it in. Now it slides on. Now I have to fish for the timing chain to get it in. Get it over the bushings. And the head is on. Your gasket goes on. See if it's facing the correct direction. Nope. Try this one. Yeah, that works. Put the lid on. There's this. Put his lid on. His cover on. And there's a small arrow which faces upwards. If it wants to, looks like the studs are a bit bent. I believe they are. Okay. Now comes a little story. Now this top lid is kept on by four nuts. The three of them are these, are these cap nuts. And there is one normal hex nut that goes on this one. Um, these three. Have a regular steel washer this one uses a copper washer uh, that's the way it was from factory the copper washer is used here to seal off the oil pressurized oil line and this one has an open open nut a normal hex nut because the expansion rate of this stud is different it's because it's open here and it ex is exposed to the elements that are coming from the front wheel it's always dirty in this hole here not sure why they done it this way perhaps for extra cooling but this stud is partially open here whereas the other three are completely enclosed by the cylinder head and the cylinder just put a washer on copper washer goes there So, let's see if it rotates, it rotates nicely, so, we're almost done, now before I put on the ignition plate, I just realized it's better to inspect the, the timing chain, in order to put it on, everything has to be timed, it uses a mark up here, on the camshaft sprocket and up here the timing mark for the top dead center which is also used to adjust the ignition I'm gonna, gonna put a flywheel on doesn't have to be super tight on I only need the timing marks for now Oh 
gonna rotate it twice until it's on top dead center, which it is right now. T lines with this small mark. There's this Julia uh, Chosen's camera, but in between those teeth is a small O, small circle. The camera will focus. There it is, the O mark. And that aligns with this mark in the cylinder head. Try to do this in a decent manner to get it on. Use my spoke to get a chain on the sprocket. And then wiggle it. Now it needs to advance. A few more teeth. A few more links, I mean. On the timing chain. Well, sorry, I couldn't do this with the camera and my head being in the way. There's a small light. Now, if you see, there is the O mark. Hope it shows and it's aligned with this small mark in the cylinder head. It's barely visible, but now these are aligned. And this is also on top that center. So this means that the position of the camshaft and the cam sprocket is okie dokie. And now I can tighten or screw in these three small bolts and tighten everything up. Now we know that the timing of the camshaft is what it should be. So here's the ignition plate with the uh, ignition coil and the light coil condenser breaker points. I put new put a new ring on and these small o-rings go in these holes, the screw holes that hold the ignition plate in place. And I was cleaning it, it's a bit messy and it's some bad soldering and non-original wires on there. There's also a seal over here, and I was cleaning this seal surface when I found small aluminum shavings. That's what's left of it. Some shavings. I'm gonna do some thorough cleaning on this. Put a new seal in, new O rings on, and then install the ignition plate. Apply some grease on this flange mounting surface. I have inspected the tension on the timing chain. Gonna secure that one. It's a 12 mil head and tight is tight. So now put the small O-rings in. And we can toss the ignition plate in. And don't forget to put some grease on the crankshaft, I almost forgot. Another thing I forgot is to put a new seal in the ignition plate. Yes, with a small coat of grease on there. I'll show you. New seal is in. If you put it on, this capacitor condenser is facing backwards and the breaker points are facing forward. And now it should shoot slide in. Use these countersunk screws, anti seize compound, sorry, some copper grease. Put in the next one, lower one. Till it's all the way in. Now and now it's seated correctly. So ignition is in place and we can almost button up this side of the engine. I can put a cover back on and these rocker covers, small lids. Only thing I need to do is to install the sensor for the um, neutral light for the neutral, neutral switch and put a seal in here and, and put a seal here in the um, gear shift axle lever thingy 
Um, then put the um, flywheel on, adjust the ignition because it was way off and I also believe that the timing was one tooth off. So this engine had a lot of trouble starting. Once it ran, it ran well, kind of fine, but should run perfect right now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do that off camera, install what I just uh, mentioned and pick you up after I've done that. So this side of the engine is finished. I put on the covers on the cylinder head. Mission timing is set. All new seals are in. And what I wanted to emphasize, it's important to do uh, when you install the um, neutral switch. There is a bolt behind here that holds the gear shift selector drum in place. And it's held on the other side by that. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned it when I put the engine together, uh, but it's important you, you tighten these sufficiently by holding on this side and on that side. Always make sure that is tightened, that this bolt is tightened sufficiently, otherwise the gear selector drum may wander to the right hand side and you lose uh, your gear shift ability. So this side's buttoned up, let's move over to the right hand side. This cover is on, I didn't clean it, I don't have a decent parts washer anymore, something maybe for the future. Now what we need to do is to put this cover on, there's a few more, few more seals left. I've got two left in here. One goes in the kickstart axle and the other one, the other one goes in this hole for the clutch operation mechanism. I'm gonna pull this out, clean it up a little, put new grease in, put the seal in, and then show you some of the inner workings of this cover. There's something important to know about this side of the engine. So you have to pull out this, there's a smile, small pin get that out and you can remove the lever you can see how dirty and greasy this is all dry grease i'm gonna clean that up next is this crosshead screw it wants to come out need a better tool one moment i really like the setup with a bit and this screwdriver thingy and put a ratchet on top so you can push and turn at the same time, and then it's easy peasy. Ugh. Yuck. And you can see someone put copper grease on there, but it's rusty down there, so not the best job. Pull the seal out. So let's give this a clean. I'm gonna do that off camera. It's clean inside, got all the clutch operation stuff, it's clean, they were very rusty, the arm, the spring, just a quick clean up, and there's this cover that goes on here, it's rusty, I'll leave that for it is, yeah, those things are easy to replace, I can polish them up, but it's not worth the effort, even with today's prices for parts, it's so much cheaper to buy a new one, a new chrome plated one, so, let's get started. First thing I want to do is put a small seal in, some grease on there, be liberal, doesn't hurt anyone. That's one. And just push it in. It's the lowest seal, most important one is that one leaks. You'll always have a puddle of grease under your moped. So, I'm going to check the other side. I'm going to show you something important. Um, on the inside of the engine, the oil pump lives here. And the oil enters this crankcase, this cover here. And there's a split off this direction towards the cylinder head. It's important to clean this one out. They can clog up easily. The oil goes through this, this line here, and into clutch, I would say push pin, it's this pin, you can see the hole there, oil exits there, from here it goes into the clutch and into the crank crankshaft, 
make sure you clean this out well use some brake clean and compressed air that has to be spotless i'm gonna put this in don't ever forget this one otherwise you can take the whole shebang apart again meaning draining the oil always causes a mess and this is held in place it won't fall off fall out because it's held by this seal right now and this lever here stick it on there gets warm so it flows same goes with the arm there there and everywhere just not past this o-ring which prevents water from coming in and the grease from leaking out don't forget to, don't forget to put the spring on it's a return spring That goes back in and tie this tight. All right. Let's see if I can put this return spring in the way I want it. And the last thing we put in is this little pin, so it doesn't fall out. Most gasket kits don't have a gasket for this cover i'm gonna see if my gasket kit has a gasket for this cover well i looked and i couldn't find a gasket so put the cover back on so it's a clutch cover put back together clean put that one back in now i'm going to clean the surface with some scotch bright put a new gasket on and we can put this back on the engine. The mating surfaces are clean, ready greased up a gasket. Now let's put it back on and put you in a slightly different position. Sorry for all the mess and shot, but it's what I have to work with in my tiny workshop. It's two by three meters, so that isn't much really. So gasket is on another important thing is this precious thingy that goes into the clutch bearing I already greased up the kickstarter axle a bit put a little bit extra oil on there and I don't want to damage the, um, the new seal Guide the seal a little bit. And we're done. That's one Honda 50, or sorry, Honda 72 cc engine put back together. Now we're, I have to torque them to the final torque setting do this by feel as i said and then we're good to test the engine so this is how you do that well everyone i hope you liked following me along if you have any questions in regard to rebuilding these engines please let me know down below in the comments um i'm not sure if the owner wants me to help him set up the engine and test it uh when i do i'll film it i'll make sure to film it and post it in a new episode anyway thanks for watching and um hope to see you next time on project ls 400 bye